welcome to lecture one of computer architecture cs305 so in this lecture we will be discussing about various kinds of instructions that are provided by the mips ic so in the last lecture we discussed about uh, different levels of abstractions and one of the level of abstraction was the notion of assembler that generates the assembly language instructions so this is a way through which as a programmer we can order or command to the processor uh, the processor understands the language of zeros and ones but uh, through isa and through assembly language instructions we can provide our instructions uh, to the processor so just a historical context uh, in 1949 there was a machine called etsac it had only 18 instructions. So some of the instructions are there on the slide, as you can see. Uh, this is just to uh, showcase how far we have traveled so far uh, from 1949 to 2021, where uh, you will find more than hundreds of instructions in uh, your uh, laptop. Uh, the laptop uh, supports more than hundreds of instructions. So it will be uh, good to find out the number of instructions that are supported by uh, various ISAs. So uh, go and check it out and uh, discuss on uh, Piaja. So uh, as I mentioned, instructions are actually a tool uh, through which processor and the programmer communicate. And uh, the programmer knows what the processor can and cannot, and the processor knows what it should, right? So this is again, uh, as I mentioned, that this is a layer of abstraction. And if we remove uh, this uh, layer of abstractions where the programmer and processor can communicate with the instructions, then the programmers have to communicate with a sequence of zeros and ones because that's what the processor understands. So this will be a program if you don't have the intermediate assembly language uh, instructions. Uh, can you guess what exactly this program does? Well, no need to guess because there is no utility in guessing this program. It, just to showcase that uh, if we don't, don't understand the notion of abstractions here, then we'll end up uh, writing programs uh, as, as a string of zeros and ones. So in the last lecture, we had an example that uh, showcases that uh, we have to perform a simple arithmetic operation, uh, some uh, C equal to A plus B kind of operation. And uh, there, are, there are two ways through which we can uh, get the operand. Uh, one is the registers and another is the memory. So in this lecture, let's, let's expand the processor part, which I already uh, uh, mentioned in the last lecture, that processor itself is a beast and uh, we will call the processor as a core. Uh, so uh, you will find the terms core and processor interchangeably. So if you look at the processor core, it has a set of registers. So registers are nothing but containers that can store data. Uh, so you can assume you have like uh, tens of registers, let's say 32 or 64 registers. And then you have a ALU, uh, arithmetic logic unit that performs various uh, operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, or whatever you want. So this is the actual, uh, you know, the computational unit. And we also talked about the notion of memory, but the memory is actually not inside the processor or not inside the core. Rather, you have to communicate to the memory through a bus. The bus is nothing but an interconnect, which connects the core to the memory. And if we go one level down, we'll find that there are two kinds of buses. So one is the address bus uh, through which uh, you can actually uh, send your address. And then in the data bus, you will get the data back from that corresponding address. So in this way, uh, the processor kind of communicates with uh, either registers or through memory. So for registers, it can directly access them because it's uh, there in the processor itself. But for memory, it has to send an address. That's step one. 
and then get the data back from uh, the DRAM, that is step two. So accessing register is faster uh, for obvious reasons, but uh, the registers are limited and uh, you can't store your entire data, whatever data set you want in registers. We'll discuss about it later. But for the timing, you can assume that uh, these are expensive uh, containers and uh, they can't store whatever you want. So you have to store most of your data in memory, right? So this is the mega container that you can assume. And for that, you have to uh, go to memory frequently. So this is kind of a, a bottleneck from the performance point of view, because every time you demand data, you have to go to memory and get the data back, right? And uh, so as long as you are performing all your operation within the registers, then you are good to go. Uh, your, your program will be really faster because the ALU won't be waiting for the memory to get the data because the bus itself will take some time to uh, fetch the data and uh, respond back. Okay, with uh, this level of uh, 10,000 feet view, let's move on with the instructions that uh, we started with. So the first instruction that we will uh, go through in today's lecture is a simple ARD operation. So in the last lecture, we talked about addition of A and B and storing the value in C. So that belongs, uh, that, that creates an instruction called ARD in uh, MIPS. And uh, here I am using a new uh, style of uh, naming the variables. So these are actually register names where uh, dollar zero, dollar one, and dollar two. So these are three different uh, registers. And dollar one and dollar two are the source registers. So if you remember something like this, so A and B, they belong to dollar one and dollar two. So they are in registers. And C is the destination, which is the dollar zero. Okay. So most of the arithmetic and uh, logical operations, you will find that there are two sources and uh, there will be one destination. So this is specific to MIPS ISA. Other ISA can have their own uh, convention of uh, performing uh, arithmetic and logical operations. So let's, let's uh, expand this operation a bit and try to do uh, addition and subtraction in uh, one go. So this will generate uh, instructions as follows. So this particular statement, it has two operations. One is addition and then the subtraction. So first, what we need to do is, assuming B and C are stored in register one and two, we need to store the summation of B and C into a temporary register called, let's say T0, right? So uh, at the end of the first statement, uh, the temporary register T0 has the value of uh, B plus C, right? Next, what we need to do is we need to subtract D uh, from that temporary register. Uh, so that's what is happening in this particular instruction. So where you can see that D is getting subtracted uh, assuming D is stored in dollar three, right? So it's pretty uh, simple uh, instructions that you can play with to understand more. So you can try out something like uh, G plus J and uh, uh, minus I plus J. So this will uh, demand one temporary register uh, at a, a simple uh, sequence of instructions. You can go for another temporary register and then uh, you can do the subtraction based on uh, the content of the two temporary registers. Okay. So we also use constants in our program. So as a programmer, you will uh, need a way to inform the processor that I'm actually dealing with constants. So for that, uh, MIPS ISA has something called uh, instruction that ends with I, uh, which means immediate. So th this denotes that your instruction will have some constants. And the constants will be in the uh, two's complement uh, form. So if you remember your uh, course on digital logic, uh, you, you will know that there are various ways of representing numbers. 
and uh, in this case we are uh, dealing with uh, two's complement so as, as you can see for this particular instruction, uh, which is actually uh, adding 10 to a particular variable x, let's assume x is stored in variable s0. For 10, there is no register. So 10 itself is a constant that can be used directly in the instruction. So there is no need of a container uh, in the form of register. Uh, at this moment, we can ask a simple question. So since we have add i as an instruction, do we need sub i, which will do the same operation, but uh, instead of addition, it will do the subtraction. Okay. As I have mentioned, all these constants are in two's complement form. Okay. And another key uh, point here is these constants are of 16 bits. So if you want to store a large constant, you have to do something tricky that we will discuss at the end of the lecture. So uh, going back to the question, do we need uh, additional instruction which will do subtraction uh, when dealing with constant? Well, the answer is no, because uh, the negative constant can be represented in a two's complement format. So if you want to do x equal to x minus 10, minus 10 can be represented in the two's complement format, and that will do the job uh, through the use of uh, add i instruction. So there is no need of sub i instruction. There is a special treatment for the value 0, and there is actually a special register uh, which stores uh, 0 all the time because 0 is, uh, we, we use 0 frequently in our program, so it, it's better to have a register which stores only the contained uh, 0. Okay. So if you look at uh, this particular assignment A equal to B in the higher programming language, what MIPS does is it uses the R instruction. Uh, pretty in interesting. We are not performing any addition here. This is just a assignment uh, and then we are transferring the content from B to A. But still MIPS uses an instruction called R where it's adding zero to uh, register two, which is a B and uh, this is your destination with a right so but but it will be pretty intuitive to have an instruction called move instead of using an art because we are not uh, using or we are not adding anything to the content of b right so that leads to the world of pseudo instructions uh, so the pseudo instructions are actually fake instructions that are not part of the instruction set architecture, but this is used only for programming convenience. So for programmer, uh, move is kind of more intuitive and convenient when you are transferring the content from uh, one register or one uh, variable to another variable. So uh, just to help the programmers, uh, there are pseudo instructions. So what exactly happens is the pseudo instructions will eventually be converted into actual instructions uh, when when uh, the assembler comes into picture uh, because the processor has no clue about uh, or the ISA has no clue about this particular instruction move. Okay, so uh, this is a tricky way of uh, handling uh, things just for uh, programming convenience. Uh, we'll just move ahead with uh, some of the logical operations. So I won't go into the detail of uh, the, 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 the set of operations because they are pretty straightforward. You must have uh, gone through these operations uh, in your digital logic course. So one of the uh, key thing that you need to notice is uh, these logical uh, operations or logical instructions, they have uh, a, a particular letter called L that stands for logical. And then you will find various uh, operations like uh, this is this stands for shift left, this stands for shift right, uh, various uh, operations that you can think of uh, doing and or nor or whatever. And whenever you are seeing uh, I here again, uh, it it uh, denotes that you are dealing with uh, immediate uh, constant somewhere, right? So ag again, if you look at this particular uh, set of instructions that are provided, there is no not instruction. Right again, like why there is no not right? It's pretty uh, straightforward. We should have a not instruction. But if you look at uh, not operation, right? Not operation is nothing but you take your uh, 
nor operation with one operand as zero so that will become your not right so that's why uh, there is no need for an additional instruction which is having no utility right and whenever you are dealing with uh, this set of instructions you have to uh, understand that we are dealing with bits so that's why you should uh, understand that we are dealing with let's say 32 uh, bits instead of a 32 bit number because depending on the sequence of bits the final content uh, will change so uh, this is the thing that i was asking in a uh, few uh, few minutes back that we discussed that all the immediate instructions they take 16 bit constants but if i have to store a 32 bit constant which is kind of pretty common uh, how will i store it in a 32 bit register so let's assume uh, the register or the container that I have discussed so far, they are of with 32 bits. So they can store a 32 bit number, but the instruction that we have discussed so far, uh, they can take 16 bit constants, right? So for example, this is a 32 bit number. Okay. Uh, this is a sequence of zeros and ones. Uh, what we need to do is the following. So since uh, our instructions can take only 16 bits, uh, what you can do is we can uh, use this instruction called uh, load immediate and uh, here what we can do is we can actually store the 16 bits first so in this case what we are doing is we are storing the upper 16 bits here okay so 1010 stands for a and here I am storing the hexadecimal so this is a a a and a right and so this goes to a register called t0 right so at this moment the t0 register though it's a 32 bit register it stores the upper 16 bits and the lower 16 bits will be all zeros right then what we need to do is we need to perform an or with the existing contained uh, of t0 with the lower 16 bits of the constant right so in this case the constant will be f0 and f0 in, in the hexadecimal format so this is what it is f0 f0 so you do a or with the existing container t0 to get the final 32 bit constant right so this is the way we can actually store uh, 32 bit constant in a 32 bit register using instructions that uh, operate on 16 bit uh, constants okay so we will continue our discussion on mips instruction in the next lecture also with that thank you